Adrian Marshall Marty signing in. Hey buddies, welcome back to part 5 of the Python and Pygame 2D Platformer tutorial series. So if you guys missed any parts, be sure to check them out because this is part 5 of the series. But otherwise, head on over to your Python document. So to edit a Python document, all you have to do is right click on it. And then you'll say edit with idle and left click that and you'll be good to go. Now, you don't have to use idle, you can use whatever IDE you want. And by the way, an IDE is the editor of the code. So you can use whatever you want. You can use PyCharm, you can use Atom. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you're using Python. That's the one important thing, eh? So coding countdown timer, activate. Ah, there we go. So last tutorial, we got the player class all up to date and working. All good to go, eh? So in this tutorial, we're going to be working on creating the block class, A, eh? And we're going to... If we have time for it, get around to actually constructing a level, eh? So, I say eh a lot. I'm Canadian, I guess, eh? So, before I do that, I want to clean up this messy coding style a second here. Because, I mean, this coding style is one of the worst coding styles you can ever see who did that. Um, it was I know it was me who did it, but I did it, like, when I first was doing these tutorial series, I was, I was kind of a newbie to actually programming. But I have learned a good deal since, and one of the things I've learned is... Your coding cell. Keep it consistent. It can be whatever you want. Just keep it consistent. So if I were working at Microsoft or Apple or something, I would get fired for sure for that. So big no-no. Keep it consistent. So I'm going to quickly change that a minute here. I don't think you want, guys want to see all me do all that. So I'll be right back after I get that all up to snuff and updated. So first I want to tell you guys my coding style for naming variables. Basically, first word of the variable, all little case, and then the second then the first letter of the second word is going to be capital and the rest after that is going to be little case so i changed these here i changed that to a more reasonable style change that to lowercase change those three set those three and that's pretty much all i've did so far so we've got that changed to something a little more reasonable oh i should start the coding countdown timer so i'm not rambling out for hours on end here so now I want to discuss with you guys something really quickly here, and that's about naming your classes. So what I always like to do when I name my class is name it whatever it is, so in this case it's player, and then add class on the end. This way, I'm not ever going to get confused what is a class and what is an object, especially when working with object-oriented programming, which you are going to be doing in this tutorial. Name your, cla your classes with a class at the end, and your objects with an object at the end. So what the class is, is basically the class is where everything, all the attributes get defined of the class, and the object is what you actually call, is where you actually call your class. So we should really name stuff what it is. This way I'm not gonna get confused what's gopher, because I'm gonna, don't tell my brother I said this, but I took a look at his code and ugh. So he's got his class here named rat, right? And he's got his object named rat1. I'm just, what kind of rat's nest is that? And I got confused so much that I was just, ugh, my eyes went all crossed. I had to like veg out for a while because I was just, so mind boggled by it so now let's just quickly set the gopher here to player object because this way i'm we're not gonna get confused of what's what and which is which so we should be 100 good to go now i have a feeling so a shortcut to running your module is f5 uh something funny about f5 is that i was doing the tutorial and everything right so i'm like press f5 and i record with obs software and i've set my hotkey to recording f5 and f5 to stop recording and i'm just like so i get to editing and i was just like wait wh where's all these clips where's everything i was like oh no i didn't just i was rambling on for seven minutes straight and i wasn't even recording i'm just <laughs> hopefully i'm recording now i think i'll quickly check yeah i'm recording good to go so got that out of the way so now let's actually begin the play creating the, the block class we should say here so all you have to do is type class and then type the name of your class. So ours is going to be named block class, but you can name it whatever you want because it is a variable. So we're just going to, but be sure to name it similar to what it actually is. So give it some parameters and the parameters, it's going to be an, another object and the object is going to be entity, which is basically just a pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. So end that line with a colon. And then we're going to do something called creating a method inside the class. And to do that, type def, add two underscores. There we go, two underscores. Type in it, and those underscores. There we go, underscores. And what this is going to do is called creating a constructor. Well, it's going to call the constructor in C++. Give it some arguments there with only with self and x. 
and Y. So anyways, it's called a constructor in C++, we call it a constructor. I'm not sure what it might be called in Python, but anyways, what's basically going to do is as soon as block class is created, it's going to run automatically. So then we're going to give it two arguments here, which is itself as an argument, and we're going to give it X and Y. So that's where it's going to start its position on the screen when it starts up, right? So give yourself a new line, and now all we have to do is copy this, excuse me, this chunk here from the player class and copy it in here. And we should be 100% good, good to go with that. The one thing they might be wondering to yourself, wondering, hey, what's that weird hashtag number number blah 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 thing? Well, that here is called, it's the hexadecimal HTML grid of the number. I mean, a color actually. So this basically chunk of code to the computer understands it as a color. To us, we understand it as gibberish. So you might be saying to yourself, well, how am I supposed to know that this means green and stuff? Well, you could either Google it, Google like what um, number, like what hexadecimal number system is, or you could also, what you could also do is if you have paint.net installed, you'll want to go on over to the color wheel. So make sure you have color wheel selected. That's right there. And you'll want, you'll see the color wheel. Yeah, I've got an update. We'll, we'll get to that update later. And I'll see more. So you're going to want to click more. And from there, you'll see RGB settings. You, you're probably familiar with RGB. That's the amount of red, amount of green, and amount of blue in a color. And then you also see that weird hexadecimal system. So if we drag, like if we drag our mouse around here, you can see it's constantly changing, and that's because it's telling us what the hexadecimal number is for that specific color. So we're gonna pick an awesome looking. Um, how about a red? A red will do fine. So that's FF0400. So we can copy that. Let's zoom out a minute here. And now we can paste it into our code here. Control V. Be sure you include the hashtag so that Python knows it's it's a hexadecimal HTML grid. And then you should be good to go. So let's quickly create a block object quickly to make sure we're not running into errors here. Whoops, I just enabled caps locks. Whoops. So all you have to do is just type block object and we're going to set this equal to block class so this way it's creating the object and the object is set equal to our block class there we go open up some parameters and some parentheses I should say and give it the parameters of the starting position on the screen so we're going to set it to zero and well that's not zero and how about 41 million 865 that seems like a good number eh? and let's run it a quick second here be sure we have no errors and we are good to go so so we've got 30 seconds here left to create the actual play the level I'm getting a little confused here so to create the level all you have to do is in the main loop main yeah main function go above the while one loop and create and open up a list so to do that all you have to do is type level set it equal to and then open a list to open a list, open one square brace, give us, and then inside the square brace, open up some quotations, close the square Your brace. Time is up. Your okay, time okay, is yes, my time is up, up. my time, time is up, but I just really, yeah, time. okay, yes, our time is up, so I've got to end this pretty quick, and actually we're going to end this tutorial here. In this tutorial, we got all around to creating the block class. So next tutorial, we're going to be working on the level. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you guys have any, any questions about Python or Pygame, leave that down in the comment section. Be sure to leave a like before you leave. And if you guys like what we do and we guys help you out, be sure to subscribe as well. I'll be seeing you tomorrow or in ever news breaks. Marshall Marty out.